Not everyone likes the taste. So let's see if Elsa can change their minds because chives are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need black pepper, pre-soaked salt fish, paprika, butter, potatoes, chili flakes, vegetable oil, and garlic. Now I'm gonna get my cooked potatoes and put some butter in. Elsa's dad has cooked and cooled potatoes, which Elsa is mashing up with some butter. It's really hot in Guyana. I hope to go there one day. Add some paprika and chilli flakes. Make sure you don't get any in your eyes. Then mix it up. Now I'm going to twist the black pepper. What's next? We're going to peel some garlic. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help you. I'm going to put the garlic in the garlic presser. Carefully crush the garlic onto the worktop and use a teaspoon to help scrape it all off. Then do the same with another clove of garlic. Add the garlic to the bowl and mix it, mix it, mix it. I'm going to get the fish from the fridge. Elsa's dad has prepared the salt fish. Dad, come and help me check for bones. Make sure you ask a grown-up to help you do this. I think we've got that, our bones. Thanks, Dad. You're welcome, love. I need to break up all the fish into little bits. Tip it into the bowl and make sure you wash your hands after handling the salt fish. Then give it one more mix. It's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Chives! Chives are a type of herb with long, thin, green leaves and purple flowers. When the leaves have grown tall, they can be cut from the plant and used in cooking. The leaves can be used in all sorts of recipes, including salads, soups and fish cakes. In the olden days, some people would hang bunches of chives in the house to keep away bugs and creepy crawlies. Now, tear your chives in half, then carefully cut them up. Jamaica is a big island in the Caribbean Sea. It has warm tropical weather with long sandy beaches and wonderful mountains inland. Lots of food we eat comes from Jamaica, including sugar, coconuts and even cocoa beans used for making chocolate. Jamaica is an island, so the people that live there eat a lot of fresh fish. Saltfish is one of the most popular fish in Jamaica. Janae's washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. I'm making saltfish and cabbage for my friends. And she's invited Jaden, Skylar and Michael to try one of the ingredients in her special Jamaican meal. What's that? Pepper. I think it's a pepper. You're right, it's green pepper. It's bitter. Oh dear. I really like it. It tastes a little bit peppery, but nice. Wow, Michael likes it. Very sour. And Skylar's not keen. Um, no, I don't like it. Let's see what happens when they taste Janae's recipe later, because green pepper is a special ingredient in her salt fish and cabbage. As well as green pepper, you'll need red and yellow peppers, pre-soaked salt fish, vegetable oil, chilli flakes, dry thyme, fresh garlic, cabbage leaves, onion powder, black pepper, water, tinned mango, spring onions, butter, fresh coriander and lime. So now we're going to get the garlic. We're taking the skin off. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help. We're going to put it in this bag and mash it. Ho-ho! 
That's loud. Now tip it into an oven-proof pot. Add vegetable oil. Some dry thyme. Chilli flakes. Sprinkle the onion powder. And some black pepper. Now, Janae, give it a good old mix. And now we're going to get some salt fish. Janae's mum has prepared the salt fish for her to use and left it in the fridge. I've got two forks to take it apart, but you need to check if there's any bones in it. Salt fish is a really popular fish to eat in Jamaica. Now just add it to the pot. It's important to wash your hands after touching raw fish. Then it's time to give it a mix. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. China is a very large country in East Asia. More people live in China than in any other country in the world. Cooking is very important in Chinese life and Chinese food has lots of different flavours. They're sweet, sour, salty, bitter and spicy. Most food is cooked in small bite-sized pieces and eaten with chopsticks instead of knives and forks. Larry has washed his hands, put on his apron and he's ready to cook. Today I'm going to cook steamed tofu egg and prawn for my friends. And he's invited Lewis, Anya and Morgan to taste one of the main ingredients before they come round for a very special Chinese meal later. What's that? It's all squishy. It. It's tofu. No one seems very keen on tofu so far. Tastes soggy. I don't want to eat any more of it. It's disgusting. Let's see if Larry can change their minds because it's one of the main ingredients in his tofu egg and prawn recipe. As well as silk and tofu, you will need eggs, salt, water, prawns, broccoli, sesame oil, spring onions, soy sauce and fish sauce. Now we wash the prawns in colander. I'm washing them to get rid of the dirt. Add a pinch of salt and then give them another rinse. Now I'm going to pat them dry with a kitchen towel. That's right, Larry. You must wash your hands after handling raw prawns. Crack some eggs. In Chinese, we say egg as jida. Wipe your hands again. Add a pinch of salt. I'm going to use chopsticks to stir them. Chopsticks are things that Chinese people used to eat. Then pour the eggs over the prawns. Now for spring onions. This is what we call top and tailing. Then carefully cut up the rest of the spring onions. Molly has washed her hands, put on her apron, and she's ready to cook. I'm cooking jerk sea bass, green salsa, and sweet potato wedges for my friends. And she's invited George, Hazel, and Margot to taste one of the main ingredients before they come round for a special St. Lucian meal later. Kind of looks like cucumber. What do you think it is? Mm, that's not nice. Well, it's not cucumber, it's actually spring onion. I don't like it that much. Bit spicy. It's sweet, it's crunchy, and it makes my mouth burn. It's all right. 
I like it. <laughs> so, do you think everyone will like Molly's recipe? It's got spring onions in it. <laughs> as well as spring onion, you'll need sweet potatoes, cinnamon, sea bass fillets, allspice, ground cumin, cayenne pepper, fresh thyme, chilli flakes, black pepper, cherry tomatoes, vegetable oil, avocado, tinned pineapple, a lime and fresh coriander. So, what's first, Molly? So I'm just getting the bag out. Now I'm going to put the sweet potato wedges in. Ask a grown-up to help you cut up the sweet potatoes into wedges. Then add some black pepper. And half a teaspoon of cumin. It smells a bit like sweet. Now I'm just going to fold the bag and mix them all around. That's a clever idea. I'm going to put them onto the baking tray and spread them out a bit. Daddy, please may you come and put these in the oven? That's right. Get a grown-up to put them in the oven for you. Thanks, Dad. Let's see if Aksara can change their minds because tamarind is a special ingredient in her recipe. You'll also need turmeric powder, chopped tomatoes, curry leaves, shallots, coconut milk, fish, chilli powder, coriander powder, vegetable oil, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, garlic puree and mustard seeds. First I'm going to get my dish and then I'm going to get my vegetable oil. Spoon the oil into an oven-proof dish and add mustard seeds, fennel seeds, fenugreek seeds, curry leaves and then give it a mix. Makisa, can you help me with the shallots? Aksara's big sister, Makisa, is helping to prepare the shallots by carefully cutting off the ends, like this. Now peeling the shallots. Carefully cut the shallots in half and then chop them into small pieces. Now I'm going to put my shallots in the dish. Give it a mix, cover the dish with foil and ask a grown-up to help. Mum, could you put this in the oven, please? Mum is putting the shallot and spice mixture in the oven to cook for a while. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's tamarind. The tamarind fruit grows on trees in long brown pods. Inside the pod are seeds and juicy pulp, which have a sweet and sour taste. It can be added to soups and dessert, or dried in a block, then soaked in water to make tamarind paste. It's been said that tamarind can be good for you, and in Asia, some people rub it on their foreheads to make them feel better. Aksara has already soaked her dried tamarind in water. Now I'm going to mash up the tamarind with my fingers. Tip the soaked tamarind into a sieve and push the pulp through like this to get rid of any lumps. I like the smell of tamarind. Now I'm going to scrape off the, the tamarind at the bottom of the sieve into the bowl. Wow! That looks very messy, but such fun. Capers are one of the ingredients in her recipe. You'll also need lemon, fish, sweet potatoes, black pepper, gherkins, breadcrumbs, mayonnaise, eggs, vegetable oil and flour. First, I'm going to get my sweet potatoes. Esme's mum has chopped some sweet potatoes into wedges. I'm going to pour my oil on my sweet potatoes. Grind in some black pepper. Now, I'm going to grab my 
spoon and I'm going to mix it, mix it, mix it. That's right. Give it a good mix. Then tip the sweet potatoes onto baking paper on an oiled baking tray and put it to one side for later. Then crack an egg into a mug. Don't forget to check for shell. And then get your fork and then whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. Pour the egg into a bowl. And then do the same with another egg. I'm going to wipe my hands after touching raw egg. Now I'm going to grab my fish. Well done, Esme. We're ready for the fish. Mum, can you please help me check if there's any bones in it? Esme and her mum are checking that there are no bones in the fish. I think they're fine, Esme. There's no bones. Thank you, Mum. Coat the fish with flour, then the egg and the breadcrumbs. Place the fish onto baking paper on an oiled baking tray. Then do the same with the rest of the fish. This is looking pretty good boy now. Now I need to wash my hands. Well done Esme. It's important to wash your hands after touching raw fish. Brush the fish with vegetable oil. This will help it to turn crispy and golden in the oven. It's a bit like painting this, isn't it? <laughs> crispy, crispy, crispy. Mum, can you please help me put my fish in the oven? Then ask a grown-up to help you put the fish and sweet potato into the oven. Time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's capers. The caper bush grows flower buds called capers. They're picked by hand when they're dark green and about the size of a pea. Capers are usually dried in the sun and often have salt added to them before being put into a mixture called a pickle. Capers are used in salads and meat recipes and they're an ingredient in tartar sauce which goes really well with fish. What's that? I think it's lettuce. It's not lettuce. Oh, they're all having a good munch, but is it tasty? It doesn't really taste like anything. It's nice and crunchy. Feels a bit dry and crunchy. I don't like it. I like it. Great stuff, Izzy. It's a voy cabbage. I think it will taste different if it's cooked. I don't really like the toast. Oh dear. Not everyone likes it. Can Naomi change their minds? Because Savoy cabbage is an important ingredient in her Marfi fish. You'll also need tomato puree, smooth peanut butter, a yellow pepper, mackerel fillets, dry chilli flakes, dried mixed herbs, sweet potato, garlic, long shallots, and warm water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four spoons of peanut butter inside this pot of water. Mmm, and give it a stir and make sure no one eating this is allergic to peanuts. Then squeeze tomato puree onto a spoon and add it to the casserole dish. The next thing we're going to do now is the yellow pepper. You've got to press down your thumbs really, really hard and then rip. OK. So these seeds, we don't want to put them in the mafe. Then you've got to break them into little parts like this. That's it. Just tear the pepper up and put the pieces in the pot. Dry chilli flakes next, but make sure you don't get any in your eyes. <laughs> Time for the dried mixed herbs and Naomi's adding chopped peeled sweet potato that her mum did for her earlier. <laughs> mix it, mix it, mix it. And now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Yes, that's right. It's savoy cabbage. Savoy cabbage is a green vegetable with crinkly leaves that grows from a cabbage plant. As the cabbage plant grows, lots and lots of leaves grow tightly in the middle and this is called the cabbage head. 
When the cabbage head is big enough, it's picked, washed and ready to eat. Cooked or raw, it's used as an ingredient in many different recipes. Cabbage has been grown for hundreds of years. In ancient China, some people thought that eating cabbage would help men with no hair grow it back again. Ha <laughs> ha! What's that? I think it's a herb. I think it's a leaf. It smells a bit funny. It feels all slippery. It smells like mint. Ah, it's a fresh mint leaf. I don't like it. I don't really like it. Uh-oh. I like the smell of it, but I don't really like the taste of it because it tastes like toothpaste. Oh, no. Let's see if Ryan can change their minds because fresh mint is one of the ingredients in his pork and prawn char. You'll also need an egg, soy sauce, fish sauce, garlic puree, cooked pork mince, cooked shelled prawns, spring onions, black pepper, plain flour and olive oil. I'm going to do one spoon of soy sauce into this bowl. Then add fish sauce and garlic puree. Carefully top and tail spring onions and chop them into small pieces. Add them to the bowl. Now we can get the pork. Ryan's mum cooked this earlier. Add it to a plastic food bag. I think my friends will really, really like this so much. Bash it with a rolling pin. It looks like it's done now. Yeah, all done. Now I'm going to put it into this bowl. Then get cooked prawns from the fridge. I'm going to do the same thing with the prawns what we just did with the pork. That's right. Just spoon them into your bag and give them a bash. Now remember, you have to be very careful when cooking with prawns, so make sure you don't use this bag again. Add them to the bowl. It's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Fresh mint. Fresh mint is a herb that grows on a plant that has a strong minty taste and smell. The leaves of the mint plant can be dark green, grey green, or even purple in colour. And this is the part of the plant that we eat. Mint has been grown for a very long time. Many years ago, people who lived in ancient Greece would rub it into their tables and around their homes to make it smell nice. Polina's washed her hands, put on her apron, and she's ready to cook. Today, I'm making catfish and sticky rice for my friends. And she's invited Gabriel, Amelia and Nicola to taste an important ingredient before they come round for her special Thai meal later. What's that? Uh, an onion? It's not onion. I think it's a kind of vegetable. It's not a vegetable. It's lemongrass. What does it taste like? It tastes like uh, a bit crunchy. I think it's very yucky. Oh, no. Ew. It's really disgusting. <laughs> oh, dear. No one seems that keen on the taste of lemongrass. Do you think they'll change their minds? Because it's one of the ingredients in Polina's catfish with sticky rice. You'll also need fresh lime, catfish fillets, sweet soy sauce, long shallots, fresh coriander, Thai sticky rice, soft brown sugar, water, black pepper and olive oil. First you get the one whole full of rice. That's uncooked Thai sticky rice. Add cold water and leave it to soak. Now pull the leaves off fresh coriander, put them in a mug and carefully chop them up. You'll need those for your rice later. Add soft brown sugar to sweet soy sauce. Give it a little stir. And some water to make your dressing. Then 
Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now, carefully cut the ends of long shallots. Can we peel these off? That's right. Peel off the skin and put them into a plastic food bag. Now it's time for my very, very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? Lemongrass. Lemongrass is a plant that has long, thin green leaves. The leaves look a bit like grass, but taste like lemon, which is where the plant gets its name. The outer leaves of the lemongrass are peeled off to reveal the softer inside that we can eat. Lemongrass is often used as a herb in curries and soups, but can also be used to flavour tea. Lemongrass is especially popular in Asian countries like Thailand, Malaysia and Vietnam, but is now used in cooking all over the world.